Dwayne Wade Jr., marketing manager here at Shell Games, and we are here to talk about unique pathways to enter the games industry. So if you have questions about you know, how do you uh, get a job in games, what does a, a job in the games industry entail, uh, how do you get from point A to point B, is there a direct line? Uh, well, we're saying that because there's no direct lines to get into the games industry. You get a chance to hear some fantastic stories from a number of different disciplines uh, here today. So just uh, as always, some housekeeping. Uh, if you have a question, please put it in the live chat if you're watching on uh, YouTube, if you're watching through uh, Discord, whether it's our Until You Fall Discord or I Expect You Die Discord, uh, please ask your question in the Dinner with the Devs channel and our live chat moderator, Adam, uh, or in Discord known as Kudakuma, uh, we'll make sure that we uh, see your question. And if there's uh, a chance for us to answer it, uh, we'll make sure that we uh, do. So uh, before we get started with the whole conversation, there's, as always, there's a question that I like for our panelists to think about uh, throughout our hour here. And I'll go back to it uh, at the end of the stream. And that question is for them to ruminate in their minds what's one piece of advice that you would love to give someone that you wish you had uh, received earlier in your career so what's one piece of advice that you would love to give someone now that you wish that you had received earlier in your career so don't answer that now we're going to come back to that uh so again thank you all for being here and let's introduce our panel so first we have dimitri Hi everyone. Uh, like Dwayne said, my name is Dimitri. Um, I am a producer over at Shell Games. Um, I've been at the studio for about five, six months. I started at the end of September, um, so give or take uh, that time period. And then um, as an industry professional, so I actually came from esports. So at, in the gaming industry as a whole, I've actually been here for about six years. Good stuff. Thank you, Dimitri. Jess. Hi, uh, I'm Jess. I'm a senior design manager here, and I have been making games for about 20 years now. Um, Good stuff. And how long have you been at the at Shell Games? Oh, sorry. I was like, I knew there was one more question. I'm sorry. I was like, I, I started scanning this, the questions. Um, and I've been here for about a year and change, uh, previously working in the location-based entertainment um, industry. Good stuff. Thank you, Jess and John. Cool. Uh, I'm John. I, uh, I'm a principal engineering manager here. Um, I've been here, I was keep saying one month, but it's now been two. Uh, I came most recently from Microsoft, um, but uh, uh, I don't know if I've been doing this for a long time. So I, can, I'll, I'll, I don't want to give any spoilers, so I'll, I'll save how long I've been doing what for, for later. All right. Thank you all. And uh, yeah, like John was saying, so how uh, this stream is going to work? Uh, each person is going to have a little bit of story time. We're going to uh, give them the stream to talk about their uh, story from uh, where they started to where they are now. And then uh, throughout each, if there's a super interesting thing, I'll stop there like, hold on, can you go into a little bit more detail? Uh, but uh, overall, we're going to get their stories and then we're going to ask some overall questions about how... Uh, certain obstacles they they had faced, some pieces of advice that worked, some pieces of advice that didn't work. And as always, we are looking forward to all of your questions uh, throughout their stories or uh, towards the end of them. So uh, let's get started with story time. So first we have Dimitri. Yeah, so um, I have a unique uh, way that I got into gaming. Um, so in college, I actually was a biochem major. I decided that I wanted to be a virologist. And then looking at my career path with my counselor was like, I don't want to be in school for that long. So I was like, no. <laughs> so I ended up switching over to computer science because in high school, I used to code robots for um, the Technology Student Association. It's a club that I used to compete in. So decided I would go into that. Um, working there uh, as a part-time um, like a person who worked in college, uh, my significant other actually just told me like, hey, why don't you go volunteer for this local um, publisher? They do a world championship event every year. They pay about like $13 an hour. 
And as a poor college kid, I was like, sounds great. All I have to do is stand there and open doors. Cool. Um, so I went and volunteered for them. And I actually eventually met the COO of that studio and then also um, my future boss. And they both really liked me, said I was super organized because I helped out a lot of places that I didn't need to help out and told me just to apply for their event coordinator position. Um, from there, I actually um, did apply, got the job as an associate. So I helped the main event coordinator and Due to uncertain circumstances with their family and things, they had to leave um, the event early. And so I was left by myself to handle the championship and actually ended up doing super well. And uh, from there, they offered me a full time position. Um, so that being said, I didn't actually finish my college degree. I kind of just jumped into my career. Uh, but based off of that, I will say um, I'll reserve some of like the advice I give is that don't ever quit on college because that is the one thing I ever did regret. But um, I, if you guys have questions about that, there is a deeper story to why I chose my career over my college um, path. But that was my intro into the gaming industry. And so I stayed in esports for about five years, um, then decided that I wanted to do something new and got offered a job with Shell Games. And I took it because it was a little different than esports and decided I wanted to get into game development. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Good stuff. Thank you, uh, Dimitri. Good stuff. All right, John, story time. Looking forward to it. Well, let me I remember to unmute here. Um, <laughs> uh, so I've got I've got notes here, and I'll try I'll try to be brief. I uh, a part of my story is I I taught uh, game development for um, uh, about four years, uh, and one of the things you learn to do as a teacher is you learn to fill up three hours of lecture. Um, and so I will try not to lecture for three hours. Uh, keep it brief. Um, but there's a, a couple couple twists and turns uh, to my story, which uh, I think are worth um, I'm noting. I, I didn't have a normal path, but um, uh, I don't know what normal path is. Uh, like, like, I don't know. Uh, it's maybe it was third grade, something like that. My, my dad brought home a Commodore 64 and like set it up in his room and uh, like up on the up on the dresser. And like I was on the bed and I was like trying to figure out, I was like, how do you do anything on this? And I was just like, like spent a lot of time trying to do anything, but I wanted to play a game on the computer and I heard about him, but I didn't, I didn't, we didn't know what, we didn't know anything. Um, uh, but that was probably my introduction, that Commodore 64. Uh, there was a game, Ultima 4, which was a friend of mine had given me. And that was like, that got me into it. I was like, you know, this is the thing that I want to do. I want to make games. Uh, and then as I got to high school, you know, um, uh, you know, they do this, those high school, like counselor, like uh, 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 tests to figure out what you're going to do, like in your future. Like I would answer the questions that would guide me toward the answer of being a computer programmer. It's like, if I know if I answered this way, it's going to lead me to, and, and I, I don't know what what it would have give, told me to do otherwise, but I always got like computer programmer is one of the one of the things on the list. Um, but it also probably fits because you know gaming systems. Um, so, but but back when I started, there was no real like game development programs. There was no real game development uh, when, I, when I first started college, uh, and and so I was like, ah, oh, get computer science, I guess, is the thing to do. Uh, it sounds sounds a uh, Sounds right. Um, uh, and like I took a C++ class and I didn't really go to class and kind of failed out. And so like like but I took some other classes that were that, that I did go to and I did really well. So I had like a rough college sort of experience where I was you know goofing off sometimes, but then I'd be really serious for, for a semester. Um, but then at some point I got kind of serious and I was taking math classes, you know, taking physics classes. I was taking art classes. I was just doing all of this stuff. But I was also like, Kind of teaching once I had learned a little bit of programming, was teaching myself to make games on the side, and I was doing a lot of game game development stuff. Uh, and at one point, I like graphics was like a thing I wanted to learn. Uh, and I went to my my teacher, my, my my computer science teacher. I was like, "How do I do graphics?" And she said, uh, "I don't know. Uh, uh, maybe talk to one of the one of the seniors." And I was like, "I was like a freshman or sophomore." And I was like, "I like I remember like these seniors were coming out of like a like a I don't know maybe it was like." Uh, 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 like a like a really low level computer programming class they were coming out of and like I was like, get, like stopped and was excuse me does anybody know how to how to make graphics and they were like get out of here kid you know and, so, uh, um, and they knew nothing and didn't have because no one was really interested in graphics I was I was sort of unique for wanting to do the gra go the graphics route um, and so and it ended up uh, uh, like just kept taking classes uh, and and it, so, like after a while my my mom got sick of it and. 
And uh, I was home for like Christmas break. And she's like, you know, I went through your course catalog. And if you take two more math classes, you'll have a degree in math. And I was like, really? I, I was just taking math classes for fun. Uh, uh, I can do that. And so I got a degree in math, uh, which the, 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 the important part of like programming and, and I think a lot of these fields, it doesn't matter what your degree is in. It matters what you learn and what you, what, you know, what, what, what do you get out of it? Um, and so uh, my first job, I went home. I was uh, from Alaska. Uh, I was uh, back in the, the, the uh, back home, and you know, I don't know what do you do then. You, you graduate, um, uh, and there was a job in the newspaper for a database programmer at the university. So I ah, applied for that. I don't know what databases are, but uh, I've heard of them. Uh, and like, they gave, they gave me an interview, and I was like, okay, well, now I need to learn or Oracle. So I went to like Barnes and Noble, and I bought an Oracle book, and went to the interview, and. And they were like, what do you know about Oracle? I, I, I don't know, I, but I bought, you know, I bought a book last, uh, last Thursday. And, uh, and I think I, it, thinks it makes sense to me. I read the book uh, uh, I, and, and they hired me because, you know. Uh, it makes sense. That, that's, what, that's what people want you to do. They want you to, you know, uh, uh, take this stuff seriously. Um, uh, uh, and, and they expect you to learn as you go, right? So uh, I got that job and I worked at the university for, for about seven years as a programmer. I worked um, on a variety of things uh, back in the time when we were doing uh, internet portals were the thing, you know, and every, every, everything's going to go through a portal and single sign on. And that was, that was the stuff that we built. Um, but I was doing game development on site. I was like, that was my thing. I was, I was doing that. And I, at some point I really wanted to go and I went to, to Barnes and Noble, uh, again. Um, and at Barnes and Noble, they had, like, I was in the magazines and there was the game developer magazine. I was like, what? There's a magazine for game developers. This is like, and, and that was my, that was my introduction to the world of like, like, what, where, like that there was a conference for game developers and that there was, you know, uh, college programs were getting started for that. And so I, uh, I ended up learning about GDC, which is game developer conference. And I, and I, and I went on my own and I just like ate it up. It was just like, like program of you know, speakers. And I was just like going and like, they were talking about all the stuff that I cared about. Uh, and I just ate it up, but I like, that's all I did. And so then the next year I went with a plan of like, okay, now I'm going to go and I'm going to get a job. And so I got, I got walked away with that with, an, with, with a set of interviews and I got interview for uh, Namco Networks, which at the time they were doing mobile games. And it was the time of like, um, uh, what was that? What's the, the ball game that you like, that, that the, the Katamari? Uh, mm. Yeah. Uh, so Katamari was the thing. And they were like, they were like, what we want you to do in this job that we want to hire you for is we want you to be the prototyper for the design team. We want you to make like the design team has ideas. Uh, and so like, like, for example, if you were to prototype Katamari for a mobile phone, and this is back before iPhones this is when it was all, you know, touchpad, what would that look like? And so like, I was like, that sounds like an awesome job. I'd love to have it. And they're like, well, there's one caveat. Uh, uh, we have to get approval for this new role from headquarters in Japan. So just, just like, like uh, uh, we, we've interviewed you. We want to, we want to hire you, but, but uh, but you just got to hold off for for a couple of weeks while we get this approval, and then two weeks later I called back and they're like, oh, it's going to be another two weeks, and then two weeks later it's, oh, it's going to be another two weeks, and eventually I was like, you know, is this really going to happen? And uh, and they're like, no, uh, uh, we they didn't approve uh, the the design team to have an engineering role, and you don't have enough experience to be an engineer in the game in the in, in game development, you know, because that's 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 a that's a thing you hear. Don't believe it, but but. Uh, um, uh, so anyway, so then I was like, okay, well, I really want to do this. This was like as close to to the field as I'd ever gotten. Um, and so I, uh, I, I said, well, I, I gotta go to school for this. Like, there's there's programs. There's a master's degree I can get. It. So I so I applied for uh, the master's degree at Abertay University, and I didn't know anything about that, but I just knew that they had a had a school in Sault Ste. Marie, which is like right on the right on the border. So it's like in Canada, right at the border. Uh, uh, it's sort of in the middle of the Great Lakes there. Um, and so I was applied for that and I got accepted and I was like, wait a second, this is like, I've read about it. Like afterwards, you know, after you apply and, and get accepted that I read and found out that that's a, that's a remote school and the actual classroom is in Scotland. And, uh, uh, they're just, they're just a classroom where they see the feed and they can interact with the classroom. But like, that's, and I was like, well, if I'm going to go from Alaska to Sault Ste. Marie, I might as well go to Scotland. And so I went to Scotland. Uh, and I think it was like maybe the third month of classes, like one of the, one of the local game companies came in and like demonstrated the game they were working on. And uh, um, uh, it was like, that's, that's, that's cool stuff. And so I stopped him in the hallway and I was like, ah, you know, I've, I've got this background. I've been doing a lot of stuff. Um, you know, I'd be totally interested in, uh, in working for you guys someday. 
Uh, and they're like, well, we're actually hiring a student, uh, uh, a programmer. And like I started two weeks later and, you know, worked on my worked on my degree um, for the rest of the time. And, and again, you know, still learned a lot of stuff. But uh, that was my intro. And of course, once you get any job in the industry, um, you're in. Uh, so I stayed in Scotland, worked for Proper Games for a couple of years after graduation on this postgraduate visa that allows you to work in Scotland uh, if you graduated from a, a Scottish university. Uh, and then I was came back to the States. I had my, my, my visa ran out. Come back to the States. And I was like, wow, I got a master's degree. I bet you I could teach this stuff. And so I applied for a job teaching game programming at uh, uh, in Vermont at uh, Champlain College. And uh, and I got the interview. And then I went and they were like, come down and do a, do a uh, you know, a, a, a sample teaching lesson. And so I was like, okay, I don't know what I'm doing. Like, well, sure, I'll go. And uh, and I got that job. And so then I uh, taught for the uh, Champlain College for about four years, um, ran their uh, game programming degree program. Uh, and then I was like, I want to make games again. I, like, I, it's fun teaching other kids to make games, but I want to do it. Uh, and you get to spend your summers making stuff, but still, it's not the same. Uh, and so uh, that's brought me to Seattle. Um, I ended up working for uh, Adam Jack. Uh, worked for they. We had a we had a project with um, Activision uh, at the time. Uh, we worked on it until the project ended and didn't uh, publish. And there's a whole conversation around that. Um, but then uh, that studio closed, uh, and I was uh, kind of looking at what's next. And I got heavily he headhunted from Microsoft to uh, to work on Hololens. Um, and they are basically looking for game tech uh, uh, for the Hololens. So it's all Unity and and uh, and basically all the same stuff we were doing, same same uh, you know, same 3D tech, all of that, um, but but for your headset. And I went in, and they put the thing on my my head, and I saw a live captured 3D chimp uh, uh, hanging from the, the 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 chandelier there at the at the, at the office, the the light light fixture. And I was like, this is cool. This I want to work on this. And so um, basically worked in the entertainment industry, not games, but game like experiences. Uh, from Microsoft uh, until slowly they focused on enterprise. Um, so then I was doing game stuff for enterprise. Uh, and uh, I was like, ah, yeah, games is what I really care about. And that was uh, sometime this last winter and uh, ended up here at Shell, Shell Games uh, as a, what am I going to do after Microsoft? So long, long way to get here. And again, I, I, I can talk. Now, I remember... I remember the the booklet that you're talking about of finding jobs. Uh, I think I had it like seventh to eighth grade, the occupational outlook handbook. That's yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. You take the and, and in this, this case, it was like they had, they had they'd taken that and they computerized it. So it was even better. Right. It was like you sat down a computer and you like answer A, B, C, and yep. they give you yeah. a thing. And it's in that. That's, yeah. And give you a list of like like thirteen occupations that you'd be good at. Now, like you know, no, 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 no. There it is. That's the one I was going for. That's it. That's it. Yeah, I think I never got what I wanted. So I don't know, but I'm here. So there's that. <laughs> Next up, we got Jess. Hey, those are great stories, guys. Uh, due to um, hybrid na uh, nature of work, I rarely get to meet my coworkers in this way. So that was very exciting. Thanks for sharing. Um, I also have a, what is normal way into games. I graduated college with uh, a bachelor's in creative writing and music. I was a poet and playing classical piano. After that, I was like, you know, like one degree in poetry isn't enough. We should double down on that and get a master's degree in poetry because that's definitely what the world needs. So then I went and got a master's degree <laughs> in, uh, in New Orleans, um, both of these programs that I went to had study abroad. So I would hang out in countries in Madrid and in Italy and in Mexico, because that's where they had campuses and do all the things that I recommend everyone do in their life, which is travel and study abroad if, you, if you've got the opportunity. Um, so games wasn't even part of, I played a lot of games. Uh, my move was to beat people in arcades at Marvel vs. Capcom and look at them while I did finishing moves. And that was like my big thing. So I was playing games a lot, but it, I'm also old enough that there wasn't programs. It wasn't an option. It wasn't a thing. Um, fast forward. So I'm walking dogs for a living in Brooklyn, living the best life. Uh, it, part of like a really vibrant artist community 
down the Lower East Side in Manhattan of poets and, and visual artists and everyone. Um, and through that, I am performing at readings. I am going to weird art performances. I'm just doing all these things and saying yes to all these experiences. And through that, you meet a lot of people. And so one day I am sitting in a friend's kitchen and she is cutting my hair because she is indeed a hairstylist. And her husband walks in and he's the first person I'd ever met uh, that was a game designer. He had a small game studio and he sat down and we chatted and God of War 2 had just come out. And I told him everything I liked about God of War 2. I was like, they're, they're using in-game assets during loading scenes, but they're like, they're cutting that and they're making you feel like you're running through, but they're really loading. And, and he knew everything, but I was excited and I was getting my hair done. So I was, you know, it was just a great time. And about two weeks later, he called me up and was like, I know that you write well. I know that you're funny. I know that you like games. You want a job at my game studio. And I said, okay. Uh, Cause I, again, I was walking dogs and I asked my then partner at the time, I was like, dogs or, or like game career. And he's like, you should probably go take it. You like video games. You should give it a shot. So I worked in that studio for about six years and just learned all of my skills on the job. Uh, it was like a three-man team and it smelled like Taco Bell and there were no windows. Uh, and we would bring people on and in and out as, as we did. Um, but we did a lot of great work. So some of my favorites from that are Viva Caligula, where you played Caligula and you were raising down Rome and every key on the keyboard was a different weapon. And you would like have to go and do some massacring and, and, and then we did Bible fight. Uh, so we did a lot of work for Adult Swim and we did a lot of SpongeBob and Nickelodeon work, which was really nice. Did a lot of Dora games, so I know. Uh, but my favorite thing was we made this uh, dinosaur outbreak game for Lego and it had this collection component in it. Uh, and there were children like around the world playing. This is all you know on the internet, uh, children around the world collecting and making collages, like getting all the collectibles, printing out the printer sheets that we had like made files for them, uh, sticking them together and then sending them back to us. And I was like, well, this is the best job ever. Like nailed it, like this is wonderful. So um, I was hooked, but at some point you cannot sit in the Taco Bell room anymore. So I got a job in educational publishing. Uh, I got poached because it was McGraw Hill and they wanted to make games that, uh, were, you know, beyond edutainment, but really um, was a very hard look at giant corporate America. And the transition of print media to digital media is a very hard place to be in. And so that job was a, was a big learning. Um, but the things I got out of it that were invaluable were what people can do at what levels of their education, like scaffolding and how you work all that together. So it was really an interesting job in that I had to learn how to design for other people. When you're making adult swim games about Caligula, you are designing for yourself. <laughs> when you're making games where you're trying to make it fun and about reading for kids that can be in kindergarten or up to sixth grade, you're really its audience first. And that's a really good lesson. Um, but that's a miserable place to work. So then I started working in, <laughs> I have a lot of these incidents where I apply for a job and there's just someone on the other side who sees me and you're like, I'll give you a shot kid. And so I walk into this like fancy design firm on Fifth Avenue in New York. Uh, and the owner is this nice, well, this really ingenious man named Edge Schlossberg. And he's like, wait, you're a poet game design designer with an educational slant? Like perfect, exactly what we need. And I'm like, no one's ever said that. And so that's when I started doing work for location-based entertainment. And that's making, you know, somebody designs a museum, they make the building and somebody has to decide what goes in the building. And so that was what our job was, is that we made all the experiences and not just museums, but institutions and corporate headquarters did work for festivals. And it was all of this using game design to make people move through physical space and play in these physical spaces and turning public spaces into play spaces which I absolutely adore. Um, then I got poached for another small startup studio that like made millions of dollars on a uh, Kickstarter. And I was like, this is my chance. And I got there and, uh, and I'd done some like freelance work for them. And I got there and they didn't use the funds right. And it closed down. And so I lost that job immediately. Then I freelanced, did Wild West stuff. Like I got weird games where, that like for Bravo TV network where people are doing like a never have I ever weird truth-telling game that you overplay like 
I've done weird sleepover events at the Museum of Natural History, just like weird stuff you pick up. Um, but I really did love that location-based entertainment stuff. So I went back to that original agency, this time as a director, uh, and there oversaw projects uh, like uh, worked on the Statue of Liberty Museum that opened up in Liberty Island, did a lot of work for the Motown Museum, um, did a lot of work for you know big companies like Comcast and Bank of America, and that really gave me a lot of my polish, my ability to talk to people um, and present. Uh, but uh, it, then pandemic hit and I got laid off. And I, Shell Games is exciting to me in that we do location-based entertainment, we do VR, we do straight up game design, and that's the type of environments I like to be in. So when my industry shut down, which is really like people in space, I was like, oh, I need something that branches both sides of that. And I've been following Shell for a while. Uh, and so I applied and then I got the job and now I'm doing fun stuff again uh, from weird mixed reality experiments to weird like VR immersive environment, you know, thing. So, uh, yeah, you just sort of say yes to stuff and then and see where that goes. Uh, and sometimes it can be really astounding where you wind up. That That's a great way to, to end, you know, story time because listening to all three stories the common thread was that you are all curious to try something new and you all said yes to something different or searching out to what that yes could be so thank you you know, all for for sharing that path but let's go a little bit uh deeper so let's start with we'll start with uh dimitri so based on where you started uh dimitri did you think or believe that you would be on this current, you know, career path from the the studying to be a biologist to you know a game producer at a game studio. Uh, yeah. So I definitely did not ever consider video games ever in like me trying to figure out my path and my career and what I was going to do in life. Um, fun fact: When I first went into college, I decided that I was going to do a similar thing as Jeff. I was going um, to be in music. So at Georgia State, they have a really good music program. And um, I enjoy singing, uh, fun fact, especially opera. But and my mom really loved it. So I was going to choose that path. Um, but I do come from a divorced home. So uh, one parent was OK with it and the other one wasn't. So there was a giant fight. And so um, going to that, I chose something that uh, I thought I would really like. And so none of that ever took me to gaming. Um, I played games when I was younger, always. It was something that my brother and I bonded over. So a lot of like Assassin's Creed, Halo, Call of Duty, um, but never once that I, like if you had told me back then, like flashbacks when I was younger in high school and said, oh, you're gonna eventually go into gaming, I would have like laughed at you and thought you were kidding. Um, Cause I, cause in my mind, uh, gaming was always about more of the artistic side. Like I never really thought about the coding side of it either. So it was more like if I wasn't an artist, I wasn't going to be in video games. Um, so mm -hmm. that being said, I never really thought that uh, gaming would be a path that I would ever ch like choose. And it kind of just like fell into my lap. And I was like, oh, I do like creating things and planning things and managing things. And so um, when that opportunity came, uh, just like you said, Dwayne, I was just very open to it. And I was like, sure, why not? I'm not really doing anything and I'm, I suck at college. So why not? <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> and, um, so whenever you became a event coordinator and they kind of left you to organize on your own, how did you make that jump from, you know, planning events to, uh, esports. Yeah, um, I guess uh, one thing I kind of like glossed over in that that timeline. Um, so I started out as an event coordinator. Um, I did that for about two years, and then it turned more into more of a project manager role because the mm -hmm. way that this company worked is they would only have this one big event per year, and they really stopped going to conventions or doing like the little table convention things. Um, if not, HR would handle those. So my role turned into managing that world championship and then uh, everything else. So involved with the world championship. So from like their um, uh, their season all the way until like different projects, different clients that would come through the door because eventually their esports sector for this publisher split off into their own esports company. 
So when we transitioned into the esports company, I just became the project manager of that company. And so I would handle like client stuff. Um, I did all of our shows and then also did a lot of like back end things. So um, that's how I transitioned my role more into a project manager role. And then um, all of those skills that I picked up from like event coordinating to managing, uh, ju just being a project manager in esports transitioned over into my role for producer for Shell. Gotcha. No, thank you for tying all of that together. Cool. Uh, John says, uh, same question, uh, based on where you started, you bounced, you bounced. So are you originally from, let me back up a little. Are you originally from Alaska? All right. I keep, I keep accidentally mute, mute, muting myself. Um, uh, uh, yeah, no. Um, so my, my family's actually from, uh, uh, originally like when I was born, uh, uh West Virginia, um, my dad's okay. family's that area. Uh, so that may that like part of the story is why back here and part of the reason why back here is because after I after I we left and then came back uh, or left left my dad's big dream was to go to Alaska like like they you know I, my thing was game developer magazine his thing was the Alaska magazine so much so that when I was like a four year old kid the first word I learned to spell was Alaska because it said Alaska across the top there um, but uh, uh, yeah, so his big dream was to go to Alaska. Took the family up there. Uh, we uh, uh, and they've basically been up there ever since. Um, and then uh, when I, it was also a part of my story where I thought I was going to go work at Disney. Um, and I thought the way you work at Disney is you go to Florida and you go to Disney World and you go to the casting center. You're just like, I want a job and work my way up, and I'm going to become an animator. Uh, and that's the way you do it. And of course, you know that's not, but but old school. Like like, there's a lot of people that still believe that's that's the just start at the bottom and work your way up. Um, and so I went to Florida and I ended up working at a, at a, um, uh, uh, an engineering company, like, like an actual, uh, uh, HVAC, HVAC and, uh, uh, fire protection. Uh, basically they do, they bring in the architect drawings and then you like draw an AutoCAD over top of them with, uh, with all the other stuff that goes into a, into a building. Um, and, uh, and I, I, I got that job again, sort of, you know, you know saying yes to things, uh, uh. My mom's involved in a lot of stories. She was talking to somebody in the apartment complex that I lived in who had just like started like working there and was like, oh, my son does computers. You should hire him. And so I was like, okay, sure, I'll go. I got nothing else going on. Disney's not hiring. Um, uh, and so I ended up working at that that uh, that company for a year. Uh, but that was like enough to be like, okay, well, this is not what I want to do for the rest of my life. I want to go back. I want to go to college. This was pre, pre I had like one year of, of not great college. Um, uh, and so... I was like, ah, I got family in West Virginia. Like my, my grandparents are there. I'll find like, they, uh, they, they used to have these college guides uh, and they had like these little graduate hats uh, and like five graduate hats was like really hard to get into. And one graduate hat was really easy to get into. And I found Fairmont, Fairmont State College, which is like an hour and a half south of here. And it had half a graduate hat. And I was like, that's the school for me because it also had your science program. It had art program. It had physics programs. It had all the stuff I wanted. And I knew I could get in because I had kind of failed out um, in my first first year. Uh, and so I came down here, um, uh, uh, Florida, or sorry, uh, 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 Fairmont. Um, and then my uh, and then my sister, who didn't she had a, had a year. She didn't fail out, but she she wanted to do something different. She ended up saying, "Mom, my brother's work. My, my brother's going to school in West Virginia. I'll go to school there too." So she came down. She met a guy, uh, and they've been here ever since. Uh, and so you know, fast forward, you know, however many years, I'm on the West Coast. I'm working in Seattle. I'm at Microsoft. I'm thinking I want to get back into the game industry. Um, uh, and I'm looking at where are the studios near like family, because you kind of pandemic makes you think about family. And I've got a kid now and, you know, it'd be nice to have the kids near the, the near the cousins. Uh, and uh, when the recruiter called up and said, have you ever, you know, considered Shell Games? Um, have you ever considered Pittsburgh? I was like, well, yeah, I actually have because Pittsburgh's close and it's the biggest game studio anywhere close to my sister. So, so uh, uh, yes, I have thought about Shell Games, which he de doesn't normally get. He normally gets like, no, I've never heard of it. Uh, uh, tell me about, you know, tell me about Pittsburgh. Um, so, uh, so, so the long, the long answer is, uh, you know, that's part of the reason why I'm back here. Uh, I do have family that's in this area, but my folks are still in Alaska. They're, they're now considering moving back here because all the grandkids are down here. Uh, but they're also doing the Alaska. There's, there's a lot of flights and a lot of, uh, uh folks who go back and forth between Alaska and Hawaii. Cause you know, it's, uh, um, a warm place to go when you're when you're really cold. Uh, they have these direct flights. They call them the fire and ice 
flights uh, on, uh, I think it's Hawaiian Airlines. <laughs> um, uh, but, uh, but yeah, so they're, they're going back and forth. They've got a condo in, in, in Maui. Uh, but, uh, but yes, yeah, they're, my, my folks are still there. Uh, and I've got a, I've got a cabin up there still. Um, and, and I, I think it's one of the most beautiful places on earth. Uh, and, uh, and, and so my, my whole part of one of the greatest things about remote work is that the idea that I can now, you know, potentially be up there for, for a month or two up at the cabin mm-hmm. working remotely, um, the ability to just kind of go wherever I think is, is one of the cool, really, really cool things about, you know, working in an industry where you're in front of a computer. Um, I think we take sometimes that for granted. I've got one of my good friends who's a, who's a, who's an, uh, 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 artist he's an animator and he's from uh, from originally from eastern pennsylvania and his dad like all his life built bridges you know and just worked himself you know uh to the bone from from uh, we got it made we're sitting behind a computer i can work anywhere in the world i you know like it's 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 uh, definitely a a privilege um uh, uh to to be doing what we're doing again i could i could i could talk three hours so uh yeah no 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 good stuff yeah, no, it's just, it's just always fascinating. And, and you're right. And what's cool about, you know, uh, show games is that, you know, we're uh, embracing that, you know, remote philosophy. And so being able to uh, not just retain our folks, but to bring more people in uh, to, you know, work on all of our, you know, uh, products and experiences is a good place to be. So, yeah, I, just, I, had a, I was oh. just saying, one of my, one of my, um, former students was asking about a job and, uh, and he was asking like, well, you know, how much do you really, do you really embrace remote work? Um, uh, uh, Cause he, he's thinking about, and we don't advertise it really big on our website that we're doing it. Correct. I was like, look, the reality is my, my project now, my producers in, in Orlando, my uh, uh, one of my other engineers is in Sedona, uh, Arizona, you know uh, uh, the number of people that are in the office on the team, like, like, maybe 50% of the team is in the office at any given point. Like we are all not just embracing uh, you know, still pandemic working from home when people want to, but also this idea of, of trying to support remote work. Uh, and I think that the from our from our studio, the only the only real challenge we run into is every state has its own laws and regulations, and we're not a large corporation, so we can't just you know hire a bunch of lawyers and make it you know through all fifty states. Um, we're 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 uh, we're working on it, um, but I do encourage uh, anybody who is considering um, a job at Shell. Uh, we've got ten engineer positions open on the website right now. Got a bunch, got a bunch. Yeah, I, I was looking at that uh, just the other day, and yeah, yeah, we, we got a lot going on. So cool. Well, speaking about uh, uh, a lot going on, Jess, you had a lot going on on your uh, path to where you are today. So, uh, did you think that you would be in, you know, Pittsburgh at a, another game studio, just uh, you know, not just working on you know LBE stuff, but just all the weird things that you know Shell, you know games picks up because I mean we you know we have that experience and that expertise in house. Yeah, definitely I like to be known as the office the person that does the weird projects. Like that is the exact place where I want to be because that means you get to do stuff with technology that no one's touched or you get to like they're like, I don't know how this work and work works and you're like, great, no expectations. I can do anything and you'll love it. <laughs> uh, I did not I don't I'm not a planner, so to say, in that I thought career path at all. I have degrees in poetry and music. Wasn't really thinking career path. Like there's like four jobs you can get with that and they're all taken. So, but what I knew what I wanted was to be happy. Uh, and I have I have the, the luxury and the complication of growing up in a, in a giant family that all work together at a family business um and i didn't wanna uh but it made them very happy and they were doing the thing that made them happy and they were all excited to do it and i was like well i want that part i just don't want to hang out with you guys anymore you're a lot so (laughs) i made choices throughout life of just is this going to give me a new skill because i that to me is very exciting and makes me happy learning like so my decisions you know is gonna is it gonna Am I going to do no harm there? Uh, are there interesting people? Is it diverse? Like, are people have different skill sets? I'm not just talking to the same person over and over who's me. Like, I don't want to have those conversations. Uh, and so all of my decisions are based on those questions rather than 
I want to be the best game. To, you know, I I didn't think that at 20. It just wasn't, you know, I'm 41 now. I just, it, I, I'm i happy I wound up here. Not to say I didn't, like, just blow in the wind. Like, I worked hard wherever I showed up. But, um, but no, and I, I don't know where I'll wind up either. Like, I... Uh, I don't think it'll wind up in Pittsburgh. I don't know if it'll still be in games. Like, I really love building theme park stuff. Like, who knows? Um, but Shell is a really great place because all of those all of those opportunities are available to us here. So, uh, so I'll probably stick around here for a bit more. And then the work from home, like, you know, we're able to work from places that maybe don't snow. And I'm into that. So, uh, so it's all working out in my favor, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, yeah, good stuff, good stuff. So um, I know, uh, Demetri, you uh, talked about uh, saving some uh, advice or some story for later about you know uh, advice or a mentor tip. So uh, we're we're at that point now. So uh, did you ever receive uh, something a significant piece of advice or a significant you know mentor tip that? Uh, you know, either changed your course or accelerated your course to where you are today? Uh, yeah, I think I had a lot of um, unique people in my life give me different pieces of advice, but I think the one that really resonated with me and stuck with me is that um, it doesn't matter your background, kind of where you come from, as long as you really, really have an honest conversation with yourself. So like, even if I was like doing a bunch of things and I felt like I was doing the right thing or I was going down the right path, um, the biggest thing that resonated with me was someone told me, just make sure it's the best decision for yourself. Like at the end of the day, this this business is going to be this business. They're gonna do what's best for the business. It doesn't really matter what you do for it. It's just, you need to analyze like yourself and make sure you're happy. And, I was constantly asked that question um, by my manager and the people around me, like, are you happy? Like even my family. And so, um, and I think this one best came from my mom because she, she does a lot of different things. Um, she, and she's just like me, like, I'm just like her, like we have to be doing something like we don't ever take like a moment to breathe. So um, the best thing that she said to me was like, how are you feeling? Like you need to make sure you have an honest conversation. So I think the one thing that stuck with me that even I would give to other people, it's like, be very honest with yourself. Um, and just like Jess said, like going into different like things that I did, it was always about like asking myself, am I happy? Am I learning something new? Um, just really understand like the type of person that you are. And like, yes, like I didn't finish college, but I always tell people to go also have to understand like the struggle that caused me. Like you have to be very aware of the consequences of a lot of the decisions that you make. And so even though um, I'm very young and I'm very blessed to have the experience of like six years in the gaming industry and uh, without my college degree, it was a struggle. Like I didn't get paid very much when I first came in because I didn't have that college degree. So climbing up there was hard, but um, at the end of the day, like it was always worth it because I was learning something. I was satisfying my own personal goals to grow me in a career path that was going to make me happy. So I think the best piece of advice is just be very honest with yourself and know and just feel free to like explore because you're never you never honestly know what you like until you actually do it. So, um, yeah, I think that would be the best one is just make sure you are good yourself mentally and you understand who you are and then apply that to whatever job position you're doing, because if you do that, you'll always thrive in whatever environment you are because you're putting yourself first and not a company or overworking yourself or burning yourself out. So, Good stuff. Uh, uh, Jess, John, anybody want to uh, jump on that with that same question or, you know, similar line of thought? Oh, sure. I was trying to think. I had a lot of different like memories of different things I've done and it all came down to a similar theme, which is I remember one day preparing to do a really big series of presentations that was taking me to like a Beller mansion all the way to Studio B at you know at a at a um, at a record label like just just hitting everything right and uh, I was looking at my boss and he's like Jess we're all the same size and I, I was like what do you mean and he's like we're all you know we're all just human like there's no one's bigger or smaller or takes up more or less space and I guess there's also the poet 
Ted Berrigan says, uh, calls, you know, a bunch of hairy meat sacks just walk in the room. And I think that those two things are what you have is like, nobody knows what they're doing. Uh, that, um, I remember the first time, you know, everyone thinks they have to act a certain way in order to be here. I remember the first time where I just stopped like apologizing emails all the time, which is something that, you know, ladies do or something you might do culturally or whatever, and nothing changed. I stopped it. And this thing that I was doing to myself to keep myself down, I stopped doing it. Nobody noticed. Nothing changed. Everyone's giving you the same amount of respect. So you're like, you're doing all these things to minimize your space, but everyone's just hairy meat sacks. So like they don't know what they're doing. I've met the the the, the head of huge industries and they're ch- they're idiot. Like they're just you. You're like, how are you in charge of this? Like it. So please ask for more money. Your time is valuable. Take up space. Like it it no. Like we're all making this up, and I don't know how to like stress that enough. So I think that uh, Harry meat sacks and we're all the same size are the best pieces of advice that I've received. Yeah, I mean, the, similar uh, to to you, Jess. I was at a uh, after party uh, from after some game uh, awards and met you know several heads of these uh, game studios, and they're all talking, and I'm like, okay, I know, I know your CEO of this spot, and I'm listening to you talk, and it, it, it's all very interesting. So yes, the whole uh, the the whole bit of yeah. Uh, we're we're all people. We're all yeah. Harry meets sex trying to figure stuff out is is very very true. Very true. Uh, John, a uh, significant piece of advice or something that or tip that. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I've got I've got two notes here, and and he basically covered my first note. Jess, uh, uh, I I guess it's the other side of it is 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 that you know, like I, I learned at one point, everybody, almost everybody has got imposter syndrome, uh, uh, heads of companies, they all, they all, you know, not just are they faking it, uh, they're worried they're going to get found out. Like, like, you know, and, and I think, I think, you know, and, and even, even now it's hard for me to remind myself of it, but it's, it's, it's proven true over and over and over again. And the more you can keep yourself, keep, keep that in mind that like, like we're all doing the best we can. And, and, you know, maybe like, like, I guess I don't, I don't necessarily, I don't necessarily have imposter syndrome as much anymore because I know what I know, but I've also come to terms with what I don't know, and I'm okay with that. Uh, and I think that the the faster you can get get uh, to the point where you're like, I know what I know, I know what I don't know, and uh, the only thing I can do here is 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 either decide I need to know that and and go figure it out, or stop worrying about it. Right? You know, it's you the decisions in your in your side. And I, I guess that kind of goes into my my other point, which is the which is like, like, I feel like one of the things that I've made mistakes doing in the past that I would, I would go back and tell myself, which I think is one of the way to phrase this question. Um, you know, what, what would you wish you'd learned earlier? Um, uh, uh, like, like, don't waste your time, like thinking you can't or worried about you can't like, like, like I spent a lot of time doing what I was doing because like, I didn't like, I'm not afraid, but like, I was, I was like, just, basically looking back now is wasting time, like spinning wheels, you know? And it's like, I knew I could, I knew there was a thing, like, I just need to do it. Like, like the, the, there's this, there's this thing when you're, you're like, especially, I, you know, you're doing homework for, for a course, uh, you know, a, a, a college course. And like the hardest part sometimes is just like sitting down and getting started. You could spend, you know, days procrastinating. I am the best procrastinator. I, I love procrastinating. Um, I can do all kinds of things. There's all kinds of games I could play instead of doing what I need to do. Uh, uh, even, even, even now, like, like I got, there is, there's times where I'm like, I'm gonna play a game instead of worrying about this work thing. Uh, even though I know the work thing's a good thing to do and I need to, and, and, and I, I'll enjoy once I start like, like that, that whole space of like wasting time before getting started. Uh, time is limited. Like it goes fast. Uh, 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 you, you, uh, there's, you know, there are all kinds of sayings around like, you know, our time on this earth and all of that, but like, like, don't, don't, don't waste it. Cause, uh, uh, th- like, and what, what, what's the worst thing that can happen for a lot of this stuff? You know, it's, it's like someone tells, you no. uh, I, I would say that like, I had, I had a really big, like, 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 don't go the other direction. Like I went this direction at one point, I think my first, my first GDC, or maybe it was the second GDC, but it was like, it was like, I'm great. Someone should hire me. Like, like I, like, like it was all like, like the reality is 
in this industry, everybody's great. Like, like going in and pretending like you, you're better than other people, like that's not going to work either. Just be the best you can be, uh, do the best you can. And that's all people are going to ask. So like, like, like there is for everything, you know, there are a thousand things you don't know, but everybody else is in that situation and you can learn faster by learning from each other. So, uh, uh again, I could, I could talk advice for, for days. Yeah, no, good stuff. I, and I like ending on that point too, with this, uh, point of the conversations that the the best thing that you could do is just to bring forward your best self right because that's what people are going to be looking for uh for you to do so no that's great on the flip side worst piece of advice what is the worst piece of advice that you have gotten either that you noticed at the time was like oh no i'm i'm not going to do that or something that you followed and now looking back like oh that was that didn't help me at all. You know, uh, does anybody uh, recollect anything uh, from there? Dimitri, you're you're nodding your head. Yeah, I don't. I'm trying to think. So the I think the biggest thing that I learned, especially being so young when I decided to make decisions, was that um, I think the worst piece of advice is you kind of just have to accept the way things are because this is how things like this is how the industry is and there's nothing you can do to change it. Um, I definitely let a lot of coworkers get away with treating people certain ways and a lot of things that I kind of regret now, like looking back on it, like I wish I had stood up and said something and not been like so scared or been like, oh, this is just how it is. You need to have a thick skin. If you can't handle it, you just need to get out because that's such a bad mental thing to like hold on to and let new people experience. So um, I think the, that was probably the worst one. It's like, this is how it is and you just got to deal with it and you can't change anything. Um, I think taking that advice and like adapting my work style to it and just like also being like a bystander to it and not really saying anything about it, I think was probably one of the biggest things I have probably regretted in my career. And I'm very glad that Shell is not that way. So good step forward. Good stuff. Good stuff. Uh, Jess, I saw you were nodding your head too. I was trying to think and like, I've had a really awesome time. Like, uh, so it was really hard because the first person who hired me specifically wanted to hire a woman in this uh, industry and hired diversely. I just met the, the person 20 years ago who was interested in doing that, right? Like, I just, so it was really hard. But what I do remember, and this is advice from a woman who asked me, to Google search something and then print out the Google search results and give them back to her. Uh, and she gave me advice of like, oh, you know, you're smarter and you're prettier than your friend. You should keep her down for you to get ahead. And uh, and uh, and I had and I was like, well, that's bad advice. So I recognize <laughs> it as bad advice. Okay, good. Um, yeah. But because uh, like, no. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But I also think that that just like extending that out there's uh, everyone is here to help each other do the best to do their best themselves if you're in a situation that's asking you to push someone down for you to raise up like get out of there uh so uh i guess yeah and like if they ask you to print out print out and hand them a bunch of google searches get out of there uh so yeah 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 printing out google results that's that's a big red flag yeah yeah all right, uh, Joe, that, that's great. Uh, Joe, worst piece of advice? Yeah, I, uh, I, yeah. I was, just, I was trying to think. I, like, like, I, I don't know that I've I've received anything that, that, but, but I think there is there is this there is this uh, thing that I definitely would want to clear up because I hear it as advice that's going out, which is which is, and it, maybe it's not so much, but you definitely hear it. Like, like, like that where you go to school, where you go to college matters, that it's worth getting these big loans for these things. And, and yes, like a hundred percent, like if you go to a big name school, you can walk away with an excellent education uh, if you apply yourself. And if you go to schools that focus on game development, for example, you can get a really like, like amazing career. And like, like some of those schools do an awesome job, but is it worth the price that it, costs whether it's whether it's you know uh, uh your student loan or your time or whatever it is like like the reality is if you apply yourself and you go out and like find us find a find a state college somewhere where it's where it's cheap and just work hard and do it or learn it on your own or like like the, there is not one path that gets you there 
uh, um, and 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 don't like 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 don't put so much thought into like these 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 high school students who are so worried about where they go. Uh, that's not nearly as important as what you do when you arrive. Uh, and and you can you can again go go to the go to the go to the cheapest school possible and and uh, uh, make the most out of your professors and know that like like my, my whole thing was always like meet a professor. There's some reason they have focused on like that topic for their career. Like like if you're like like why would you study geology? Like find out why they study geology because they clearly love it enough to study it. You can figure out what their passion is. Then you get bring that on yourself, and then you'll do amazing in geology because you'll understand why they love it, and you'll start to love it too. True for every subject that's out there, uh, and and you know some of the some of the most amazing teachers are at at small state colleges because they you know don't want to be near their family or because you know of any number of reasons. Um, and and yes, they are there are people that are high, like like I don't want to say that the um, the the top rated schools aren't top rated, like they they also offer a great education, but. It's not nearly as important as you know how you apply yourself to your to your learning. I'd love to add to that. As a person who hires people uh, frequently, I look at first thing. I'm like, what did you build? Show me what you built, and and I want to see what you built, and then and then we'll talk about the programs and things you did. And uh, and I think that is becoming more and more true as especially as more people go through programs, right? Like it, it used to be there was nine kids, you know, nine people that you could interview at a time. And now everyone's got a degree. So why are you different? Uh, and so, and if you can't build anything, then I, I, I can't, I don't know how, I don't know how you're going to fit here. I don't know what you can do. I don't know what you're interested in. And I think that's not just for design, but like, you know, think about Dimitri, like Dimitri built a bunch of stuff too, you know? I mean, you can point to a bunch of events like I built these. So I think that, you know, whatever the thing is you're after, do it a bunch of times. Go to go to events, meet people that are making things, see if they need a QA tester, get in there as a QA tester, uh, start asking if you can go to other play tests and like just show up, just show up and do the work and make friends uh, and that like and make make objects so that when you want a job, we can look at the objects. And that is like the number way one way to get a job i think yeah great stuff let's see so real quick uh to wrap up uh the question that we asked at the very beginning what is one piece of advice that you would love to give someone you wish you had received earlier in your career uh real quick john start us off yeah, I, I feel like kind of like that was kind of what I was thinking of when I was when I was asking okay. the question. So, so basically, it's don't waste your time thinking thinking you can't. Like, like just do. I don't know the the, the whole the whole uh, uh, there is there is no try, just do. Uh, uh, it's it's not that it's not that you you succeed. It's that you're doing it. And I think it, it, just to Jess's point, like just do it. I don't know, not to be a yeah. perfect. Cool. Thank you, uh, Dimitri. Uh, yeah, I think. Um... One of the biggest things is just like, if you, and it, this it, we've repeated this a lot, if, as long as you, you're just applying yourself, like I don't have a college degree. One of the things that I do regret a whole lot, um, but at the same time, like I didn't let my circumstances define who I was. I built myself up. I knew I was driven. I knew I could do it. Um, I didn't do very well in college due to a lot of family issues and a lot of things that I let like get in my way. And so I had Oh, like a 1.2 GPA in college. Like it was really bad. So there was no way for me to build that back up, but just, you know, apply yourself and just know like, that's not the end. Like, don't let it get you down. Um, just kind of believe in yourself and just work really hard. And that's all that anyone can ask for is like, as long as you're working really hard and you know what you can accomplish, there is no ceiling as long as you believe in yourself and you're the one who's kind of pushing yourself to apply all the things that you've been learning and just that like knowledge or the thirst for knowledge and pushing yourself and getting the experience that you need. Um, and also like what Jess said, like go out and try things. Like you never know who you're gonna meet. Um, doors are gonna open that you never knew could open, but the first step is actually taking that step out and being it, being open to those doors. Um, otherwise they're never gonna come your way, so. That's right, show up and build stuff. I like it, Jess. Um. I want you to know that the reason why the three of us are here is because we also had these outside interests that made us more uh, 
flexible or adaptable, or we just did all these things that weren't just games, right? So mm-hmm. you are more than your job. And in fact, having a rich life outside of your work will actually make you a better designer, a better teammate, a better manager. All those things are true. Like I use poetry strangely in game design all the time and you wouldn't expect it. Like, how do you expect it? But it's just like lead a, a rich life and it will make you a better game developer. Good stuff. Thank you. Uh, John, Jess, Dimitri, thank you for your time, for uh, joining us for this hour. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. I do have some announcements. Uh, First, make sure you uh, like and subscribe and uh, enable your notifications. Uh, We're always posting uh, different videos for uh, with our devs or with our uh, trailers or all the different things that we're working on. We have a lot of content coming up in the next couple of months, so we're super excited. So please pay attention to the channel. Uh, make sure you follow us on all of our different channels. Uh, we're show games in uh, every place from uh, Facebook, uh, Twitter, uh, uh, LinkedIn, all the stuff. Make sure you can join our Discord channels as well. I think uh, uh, Adam is putting all the things into the uh, live chat for YouTube. So thank you, Adam, for doing that. Uh, future events. We are going to be at Games for Change in, in July. So July, uh, the in-person is July 13th and 14th in New York in uh, Times Square, Times Square in the uh, Microsoft building and then the building adjacent to that. So uh, be sure if you're able to uh, go in person for uh, Games for Change, look out for us there. Uh, we have some speaking events and we're doing some demos there. So it's going to be some exciting times. Uh, we have future yeah. Events as well in uh, July and August that we can't announce yet, but please stay tuned. Uh, look at for our newsletters and our Discord. All of our channels will be uh, announcing where we are going to be for the, the rest of the summer. Uh, watch out for future sales. Our, our original games will be, you know, uh, yeah. summer is the time for sales. So take a look for our social networks for what uh, games will be going on sale and when and uh, on which platforms. And next month, next month, VR in cars. Yes, VR in cars. We are going to be talking with our uh, partners from Holoride about our uh, VR experiences that we've been uh, building with them. Uh, We'll be talking uh, a lot about Cosmic Chase and our uh, investment in Holoride and how we are working together to bring VR in cars. Super excited. Looking forward to that. So be there. It is going to be June uh, 29th. Uh, the last Wednesday in June is going to be super exciting uh, to talk to that team. So be sure to tune in then. Thank you for tuning in now and have a good night.